Hey there, Nick Hackers here. In this video, we're going to go over how to install Docker directly inside of your WSL2 distro without needing to install Docker Desktop. For example, if I hide my camera and take a look here at my SysTray, notice that I do not have the Docker icon here because I am not running Docker Desktop. However, I can run a Docker info here, and we do successfully connect to the Docker server, which is running the daemon here within this specific WSL2 distro. Yes, we do get a couple of warnings here, but these warnings are not going to affect anything in your day-to-day. -day. For example, there's no limitations on what you can and can't run here. So I've got an example Dockerized Flask app here. I'm just running a Docker Compose up that is using Docker Compose v2. This is connecting to Docker that's running within WSL2. Everything is up and running. If I go to localhost port 8000 here, which is the port that this application runs on, notice that everything operates smoothly here. This is the application running on localhost. I didn't have to do anything fancy to get all this up and running. In fact, yeah, let's just go over all the steps here in a second, but I do want to just briefly talk about maybe the pros and cons of why you might want to choose not to use Docker Desktop on Windows. And, you know, this is not because I have some bad blood with Docker. My relationship with them is still very well. I'm part of the Docker Captains program. Really like using them. Been using Docker since 2014. And I plan to continue on using them for uh, indefinitely, right? It, the applications and the things that I build completely work. I will use it. But um, I did recently try to update to the latest version of Docker Desktop 4. And for the very longest time, I was running Docker Desktop version 3 like ancient version of Docker, but things worked. But, you know, if you've watched some of my videos in the past, maybe from a month or two ago, uh, I did start using Docker Compose V2. And that feature is really only available with modern versions of Docker Desktop, such as, you know, some version of 4. And I don't know, I think it might just be my machine because my workstation is starting to get a little bit crusty. We're talking like almost eight years old. But, uh, you know, it's got an SSD, it's got a modern CPU, it's got 16 gigs of memory. Nothing runs slow, it runs like a champ, basically, when I first built it. However, Docker Desktop 4, uh, I just had some micro stutters um, just appearing on my, machine all, on my machine all the time. So... Every time I did anything related to my input devices, like move my mouse or started typing in my keyboard, then I would get these stutters where it was like my machine was just coming unresponsive for, I don't know, 500 milliseconds. And it was happening basically a couple times per minute. It was just like a complete stutter, machine would lock up, and then it would come back to normal. And, you know, I didn't completely debug the problem down to like the exact version of Docker Desktop that was the issue or, you know, what component of Docker Desktop was messing things up. But when I was running the newest version of Docker Desktop, these micro stutters would happen. When I stopped Docker Desktop, they would go away. I've also never experienced these micro stutters on this whole machine in the entire or eight years of using it. So uh, that just led me down a path of wondering, like, can I actually get Docker installed running on WSL2 without needing to use Docker Desktop? And I found some solutions on the internet, tweaked them a little bit, and here we are. And by the way, it's going to be pretty easy to get this going. Like, you basically just follow Docker steps for installing Docker on Linux for whatever distro you have in WSL2, and then you drop in, like, a five-line shell script in your profile file, and you're good to go. You won't need to tweak or mess with anything crazy with, like, systemd or anything like that. And we're going to get to those details here. But I just wanted to give you a quick warning, or not a warning, but maybe a pros and cons on why you might want to consider still using Docker Desktop on Windows, or maybe you're like me and you take a more pragmatic approach where, yeah, uh, if things can work without it, then maybe you're okay without it. And by the way, like, you know, all the clients that I work for, some pretty big organizations, like, yeah, we definitely pay for Docker Desktop licenses. You know, we got folks running on Mac OS, Windows, et cetera, et cetera. You know, so this has nothing to do with Docker's pricing schemes or changes around needing to pay for Docker Desktop. And, you know, well, I forget the exact thing from their fact, but like, you know, if you're company is generating 10 million plus revenue, yeah, paying them $7 a developer for a Docker Desktop license plays absolutely zero role in my decision not to use Docker Desktop. I want to be very clear on that one. You know, I fully support Docker and I think their pricing scheme is completely reasonable for companies who qualify for needing to pay for Docker Desktop. So I wouldn't just use this as like not to pay the seven bucks or whatever. But uh, yeah, pros and cons wise, you know, Docker Desktop does offer uh, a UI for looking at your container. So if you really like that feature, then maybe you want to stick with Docker Desktop because just using the command line like this, you're not going to get any UI features. You know, everything is command line driven. Also, Docker Desktop has uh, this idea of Docker uh, extensions now where you as a developer like you and me, we can contribute these Docker extensions that run within Docker Desktop and then you can, you know, interface with the Docker server and you can build some pretty nifty things. Like, for example, you know, I don't know of any offhand and I can't even show you because I don't have Docker Desktop, but like, you know, if you run something like a Docker Stats, this will 
list all the containers that are running on your machine here and just give you uh, a live update of the CPU memory usage, you know, uh, disk and net IO, et cetera, et cetera, for all the containers running. And that's pretty cool. But, uh, you know, you could technically make something like a Docker extension that could chart all this out to some type of graph. And you can like visually see that almost like, uh, you know, like a little dashboard or something. That could be a cool extension idea. And you're just going to not be able to do those things without having a Docker desktop for doing extensions, unless like you built your own, like completely separate thing, you know? Um, but yeah, those are things that uh, you might want to weigh the pros and cons against too, just on, you know, whether or not you want to do this. And Another <clears throat> another big one is like, for example, uh, and this doesn't really affect me, is I tend to stick with one distro of WSL2. You know, right now I'm running 2004 here, Ubuntu. At some point I will update to 2204, but when I do, and I make sure that I moved all my files over to the new version, I'm gonna completely ditch this old WSL2 instance, right? I have no reason really to keep it around. So uh, that does mean that, um, if you are not using Docker Desktop, like you need to install Docker inside of every single WSL2 distro that you plan to use. So if you are someone who are you know spinning up a lot of different distros, then it could be handy to keep Docker Desktop around because you don't need to install Docker Desktop inside of a specific distro. Like you literally just like check a box on the options to enable it for a distro and that's it. Um, whereas with this approach that we're gonna do here, you'd have to go through the motions of installing Docker in each distro manually. Again, not a big deal for me because I typically only operate in one, but but if you're spinning up distros all the time, maybe that's something to think about. Now, there is one last thing to consider here, and it comes down to running Kubernetes. So Docker Desktop makes it really easy to run a single node Kubernetes cluster through Docker Desktop. You basically just enable Kubernetes, apply and restart, and you're good to go. But if you're not using Docker Desktop, then you will need to come up with alternative means to run Kubernetes if that's something you want to do. Now, I've done videos in the past about using Kind, and I really do like this solution because you basically just run Kubernetes within Docker. So you will not need Docker Desktop for this to work. You can basically just install this kind tool directly inside of WSL2 and you're good to go. Honestly, even if you're using Docker Desktop, you could use kind. I've actually done that in the past before I moved to installing Docker directly inside of WSL2. But I just wanted to include this in a video to let you know that if you do plan to work with a multi-node cluster, kind is a really good tool to do that. It's really lightweight, gets you up and going. And I just wanted to let you know that there is a solution forward to run Kubernetes within Docker inside of WSL2 without Docker Desktop if that was something that you wanted to do. But okay, let's say that you are ready to move away from Docker Desktop and Windows and just run Docker natively. What do you do? Uh, step one would be uninstalling Docker Desktop because, you know, like went over before uh, in my system tray here, Docker Desktop is not installed. It is not running entirely. And the next step would be to install Docker directly inside of your WSL2 instance. Now, I've already got that installed here, and I'm gonna leave all the links here that we're about to look at in the description. These are all the installation steps for running Docker on native Linux, and we can see Ubuntu, Fedora, Debian, CentOS, et cetera, et cetera. The nice thing is they have this little helper script, like a convenient script, uh, get docker.sh, and it will determine what distro you have and just install Docker correctly, depending on, yeah, if it detects that you're running Ubuntu or CentOS or something like that. So you just curl down that shell script here, officially from docker.com. You know, I'm not trying to trick you into downloading something different. Feel free to Google for these links if you'd like on your own. And then you just run that shell script with sudo because you do need to install a service running inside of WSL2 here with uh, root access for installing Docker itself. And, you know, if you weren't using Ubuntu, maybe you're using Debian or CentOS or something, let's choose CentOS here because it's a completely different distro. You know, if you scroll down in here, you will find the same exact convenience script here listed with the same exact steps. So again, like, you know, uh, we're not gonna check all of them here, but chances are this one little command here and then running it is going to get you up and running for installing Docker itself. Now, if you are familiar with working with Docker Desktop, Docker Desktop will install Docker and it's going to install Docker Compose for you. But in our case, we need to install Docker Compose separately. And there is also an additional Linux step that you'll wanna do. And uh, that will be adding your group to the, uh, or sorry, adding your user to the Docker group. and. Uh, if I go to my terminal here and just cancel this one out, you know, if I run the ID command here, we can see that I am logged in to WSL2 here as the NIC user. And down here, there is a group called Docker and my user belongs to that group. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to make a new group called Docker if it's not already there after installing Docker, then you'll want to add your user to that Docker group there. And then they say you need to log out and log back in here. I don't know 100% here what will happen within WSL2. I am pretty sure that if you just completely shut your entire terminal and open it up again, then that will give a very similar effect. If not, 
then you'll want to either reboot your Windows box. I don't think that's going to be necessary. Or you can open up um, a PowerShell window here if you're using the Microsoft terminal, open up uh, that in admin mode, and then you can just run WSL2 shutdown, or sorry, WSL dash shutdown within that PowerShell window. And that is going to completely shut down WSL2 so that when you open up a new terminal, it's going to spawn a new WSL2 process, like whatever Windows does behind the scenes, and it will effectively give you the same type of thing. But yeah, I don't think you're going to have to go that far. I'm pretty sure just closing your terminal will be good to go. And then the last step there is we want to install Docker Compose. And you know, I would suggest installing Docker Compose V2 at this point in time. Uh, it's very good. I've done videos about that one in the past. I'll link those in the card. And we can see here, we have different installation instructions for different distros here. This will be a little bit different depending on what distro that you have. But let's say that you're running Ubuntu, right? All you need to do is run the sudo app get update, and then you can just uh, app get install Docker Compose dash plugin here. And that's it. You're going to have Docker Compose available to you. And also as a sanity check, you can just run uh, Docker Compose version here. So with no spaces and no, no double dashes here for the version because it's a Go application. I've also done videos about Docker Compose v2 as well. But yeah, at this point in time, now you have Docker installed. Now you have Docker Compose installed. You can also run Docker without needing to use sudo. That was that second step that we did here, the post installation steps when you added your user to the Docker group. Now you officially have Docker and Docker Compose installed in WSL2, but there's still one situation here. So normally, if you were to install Docker on Linux, you'd have uh, a system D set up on your Linux box and the Docker uh, service would be all set up for system D so that, you know, when you boot the box up, like everything will be good to go, like it's going to start up. But we're not going to have that luxury in WSL2, at least not right now. I don't know if Microsoft is working on Adding system D to WSL2, they might be like, I don't run the preview versions or anything like that. I run the stable version of WSL2 on Windows 10, um, but there's ways to get around that in not hacky ways at all. Like this completely still works, but you know, this is like the custom part of getting things to work in WSL2, but it's not really bad at all. So uh, let me open up my Z profile file here. I am running Z shell, also made videos about that in the past. If you're running bash, then things are completely the same. You're not gonna have to change anything here. But uh, this if condition here on the bottom is the thing that you'll want to add to either your uh, bash underscore profile file if you're using bash or your Z profile file if you're using Z shell. And the basic TLDR here around this, and we'll get into more details of how this works in a second, is you know this grep condition here will make sure that this code inside of here will only execute if you are running WSL2. This is important because my dot files up are up available on GitHub. No number of people use it. I use it on a MacBook for work for some stuff that a company issued a laptop. Um, I run it on a native Linux laptop for my own self. I run it on my main workstation, workstation that's running WSL2. So I want this to work in all sorts of different scenarios here. And you know, we don't want this stuff to run if you're running Mac OS or like native Linux because it doesn't have to. So yeah, we just make sure that we're running WSL2. And then uh, what we do is we just see if Docker, the actual service, you know, not using systemd, this is using like a init D or whatever. Uh, we just wanna see if Docker is currently running. So we can actually copy this command here. And then um, let me open up below. It's just gonna be a little bit easier to see both things at the same time. Uh, if I run this command here, we can actually see that uh, the Docker um, service is running. So even if I close my terminal and open it again, you know, it doesn't matter that I'm using Tmux, you're not, you're not going to have to pay that penalty every time you open a ter terminal. So you can see here, you know, if I open up a new terminal tab, it's basically instant, right? Uh, 100 milliseconds, whatever it happens to be. If I open up another Tmux pane here, we can see very quick, there's like no delay at all. And uh, the idea here though, yeah, that's part of what this if condition is doing here. So it's checking to see if Docker is running and if it's not running, then it will execute one more command here, which is a WSL command. And it's gonna operate within your distro that you're currently in. It's gonna run this command as root. And what is it going to do? It is going to run a service Docker start. And basically we're doing you know all these redirecting here to dev null because you know if you are not running WSL2 you don't want to see any error messages from grep and likewise you know whatever um, if you don't have Docker installed even because again my dot files are pretty generic you don't you can use them and you don't have to have Docker installed right I just don't want to output any messages around like hey this Docker service isn't there because you know if I try to run a command like this here I have to use sudo in front. But, um, and also Docker is available. So if I just like put in some nonsense here, you know, we're just gonna get like an unrecognized service message. And you know, we don't wanna see that stuff every single time we open a new terminal because on WSL2, this profile file actually gets executed every single time that you open up a terminal. So if, you know, if I do something like echo, 
um, cool or something like this with a couple O's because why not? You know, if I open this up, then you can see that every time I open a terminal, it is executing this. You know, that's unlike the behavior on native Linux where this profile file typically only gets executed once when you log into the machine and then your, um, you know, ZRC file or bash RC file, that one would execute every time you open a terminal. But for WSL2, it works a little bit differently. So this isn't going to execute every time you open a terminal. But as we saw before, opens up very fast. You can't even, makes no difference with this here or there. You know, you saw those things. If, if I comment this out and uh, open up another terminal thing, like it, it doesn't make a difference. Like it's opening in the same exact speed. So let me bring that back. Done. Cool. So yeah, that's how basically all of this works. And the idea there is, again, first time you open your terminal, it's going to lag for a little bit while the actual Docker service starts, and then that's it. You're good until you reboot Windows, or maybe, like I said before, you know, if you end up having to shut down WSL2 using um, WSL2 or WSL shutdown or whatever the heck that command is, like you'd run from PowerShell, then uh, that would also reset things to where uh, this would execute again for the first time. And you know, if you run a psod script on Docker, we can see that the Docker service is running over here. Uh, there's the PID for it. It's all running. It's up and good. We can connect to it. As we saw, we're able to run containers and, and all that, and you're good to go. That's it. By the time you watch this video, maybe I'll update these links to point to the blog post that I will make after I make this video uh, that will have some condensed version of, you know, quickly installing things on Ubuntu because it's really just like, you know, execute these commands here, um, do the group stuff, and then install Docker Compose plugin, and you're good. So that's it. On that note, yeah, let me know in the comments below if you are going to be using this method or maybe you have a different or better way to do this on WSL2. You know, keep in mind when I'm making this video, uh, system D support isn't in the version of WSL2 that I have. Uh, when we do get support for that, maybe this stuff will change a little bit. Uh, potentially we won't even need it because then system D will just manage everything. That's what I'm hoping for in the future. But for now, a couple lines of shell scripts, uh, not a problem at all. So if you have any questions about this, let me know in the comments below as well. Thanks a lot for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up before you go. And uh, I will see you in the next video.